before we're live. Bill is a really regular meeting. It's now called order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then this evening, just for a moment, we would like to, uh, in remembrance of the mayor of Lombard, who tragically lost his life not only because of cancer, but due to the fact of the uh, Niles uh, West Vile. I forgot. I've been having a hard week. But anyway, we'd like to, a few moments of silence for the mayor the family of the mayor of Lombard, if you would. Thank you. It's always hard to lose someone and to think that this man fought so hard and then West Nile came along. So keep them in the family in your memory and your prayers. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Here. Trustee here? Here. Trustee Brady? Here. Trustee Argeris? Here. Trustee Vogel? Here. Trustee Hine? Yep. President Eviscato? Here. Special meeting of July 23rd, approval of the minutes? So moved. Motion made by Trustee Argeris? Second. Second by Trustee here. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Argeris? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Hine? President Eviscato. Yes. Mr. Fondilis, any changes to the agenda? No, Madam President. Thank you. A proclamation of Village of Wheeling Senior <coughs> Center Month, September 2012. Older Americans are significant members of our society, investing their wisdom and experience to help enrich and better the lives of younger generations. The Wheeling Pavilion Senior Center has acted as a catalyst for mobilizing the creativity, energy, vitality, and commitment of the older residents of Wheeling. Through the wide array of services, programs, and activities, senior centers empower older citizens of Wheeling to contribute to their own health and well-being and the health and well-being of their fellow citizens of all ages. The Wheeling Pavilion Center in the Village of Wheeling affirms the dignity, self-worth, and independence of older persons by facilitating their decisions and actions, tapping their experiences, skills, and knowledge, and enabling their continued contribution to the community. Judy Ambrascato, President of the Village of Wheeling, does hereby proclaim September 2012 as Senior Center Month, Senior Center Month, and call upon all citizens to recognize the special contributions of the Senior Center participants and the special efforts of the staff and volunteers who work every day to enhance the well-being of the older citizens of our community. And our Human Services Director, we thank you for keeping us all in gear, us young guys, and many more successful years in helping the seniors. Good evening. I just have a few things to say about National Senior Center Month. In honor and celebration of National Senior Center Month, I'd like to share a bit of information regarding senior centers across the United States. Senior centers are recognized by the Older Americans Act as a community focal point and have become one of the most widely used services among Americans, America's older adults. Nearly 11,000 senior centers across the United States serve one million older adults every day. Participants in senior center programs are about 70% women and half of them live alone. Here in Wheeling, we're about 75% women. Compared to their peers, senior center participants have higher levels of health, social interaction, and lives, life satisfaction, and lower levels of income. Nationally, the average age of participation is 75, and here in Wheeling, it's 74. 75% 75 of participants visit their center one to three times per week. They spend an average of 3.3 hours a day at the senior center, including the Wheeling Pavilion, oops, per visit. Senior centers 
including the William Wheeling Pavilion Senior Center, offer a variety of programs and services, including meal and nutrition programs, information and assistance, health, fitness and wellness programs, transportation, public benefits counseling, employment assistance, volunteer and civic engagement opportunities, social and recreational activities, educational and arts programming, and intergenerational programs. This month at the Wheeling Pavilion Senior Center, we have planned activities in celebration of Senior Center Month. A complete calendar is included in our most recent newsletter, and residents can stop by at the center to pick one up and check out what your Senior Center has to offer. Newsletters and flyers of upcoming events are also available at Village Hall, the Wheeling Park District, Community Recreation Center, and the Indian Trails Library. As an added incentive to participation this month, we have instituted a contest. Each participant will be given a punch card with all the many activities listed on the card. As you participate in the programs that interest you, you'll receive a punch for each activity. At the end of the month, the cards will be turned in for chances to win great prizes. For more information regarding the Senior Center Month activities, please contact the Senior Center at 847-459-2670. Thanks. Thank you. So we'll have an active month? Yes, we will. Thank you. Citizens' concerns and comments. Citizens' concerns and comments, yes. Uh, members of the general public may address the board with concerns or comments regarding relevant issues. The person submitting a petition, concern, or other comment shall be allotted five minutes to present their points. Ms. Kavina? Members of the uh, board and Ms. Madam President, I have something also to say no. that the village of Wheeling needs. We need especially sidewalks out on Dundee in the dark night. There's a lot of people walking on the street instead of walking on the sidewalk. And uh, this is for Anthony Stavros. You just think about the safety of others and thinking about your family because a life is also a car can hit someone and really take the life away. And then the sidewalks protects the people walking on the uh, off the street instead of getting killed or injured or lame by a car. That's all I got to say about that. Um, the Dangerous Dog Act, we should have that for the Village of Wheeling because pit bulls are very dangerous animals, Weilers are, and Doberman Pinchers. South Elgin police officer went on a call and was attacked by a pit bull. The dog had to be shot because protecting others. Our officers don't need to go to a house and get bitten or, or utilized by a pit bull. And we are also concerned about our children and our um, adults that are walking their dogs and they're not what to call vicious animals. Another thing is we need a curfew for the little ones to be set back. Nine o'clock from 11 o'clock. The people that are going into school should be in the house by 10.30. These kids are getting hurt, killed, joining gangs, and vandalizing people's property, or even shoplifting in other places. The Wheeling Committee and the Madam President has to take to change, and the Wheeling Police Department has to change that curfew for the safety of all the kids. And the parents are responsible to supervision the kids. If they're out in outside of their house, they could stay by their house, not roaming around the village of Wheeling or off the property. That's the way it's supposed to be done. But it isn't. We want to make sure our our town is the village of Wheeling with feeling, not something else. I thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shroud? Name is Dwayne Shroud. I live at 1124 Valley Stream. So far this year, I've had 
electrical interruptions four times, most recent a week ago today. Is anything being done about it? Can anything be done about it? Can we put pressure on those people? What can be done about it? Mr. Fondilos, did we not have something? Uh, we did. Uh, I believe a, an email was, was sent to all the residents on Valley Stream, but to explain further to everybody, in fact, this afternoon, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, at 2 p.m. this afternoon, uh, members of our forestry division met with the vegetation units from ComEd to inspect all of Valley Stream, the entire neighborhood, and try and trace back some of the issues that may be causing some of the outages that occur not just during a storm, but even on days like, well, like now, not like earlier today. Um, so I've been in contact with them. I know, I believe Trustee Argyris has been in contact with some members of ComEd as well. Uh, and I know that our liaison to ComEd has been uh, reaching out to one of your neighbors who's taken the lead role as a representative Polson. for the neighborhood, uh, Mr. Polson. So that has all happened within this week to try and address some of those issues. Uh, as you know, they, they ComEd, are not within our jurisdiction, so there's only so much that we can do to help be that conduit between conduit uh, between ComEd and uh, the residents. But all we can do is push them uh, through public meetings like this, through direct contact like I've been having and some of the other department heads have been having uh, to try and get that accomplished. One further comment. When you lose power, you pick up the phone. Phone lines are always there. They're doing something right. They have lines. The electric company has lines. Maybe they should go to the phone company and ask them to tell them what the hell they're doing. I'll be happy to pass that along. Seriously. The phone lines always work. Well, they are working on it. And part of it was vegetation, and I don't know if you know Mr. Paulson. Well, he's a gentleman that's kind of a spokesman for your area. I didn't know that. And he's, he wrote, and then he got an answer for the four, four power outages. And primarily, they said it was vegetation, vegetation, electric uh, line snapped. But uh, like uh, Mr. Fandila said, they came out today and our forester went out so that we can see how we can take care of that vegetation that so it doesn't go on the lines, because that's what caused most of the problems. There's a simple, simple way to fix it. Use decent equipment. If they need heavier wires, put heavier wires on. Right. If there's tree limbs above them that fall on the lines, cut the tree limb. Well, that's what they went through today for. Good. So thank it you. is being addressed. Thank you. And thank you very much. That's it. That's all? Yep. And staff report uh, may we have from the police department tonight, Commander Pentagonis. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, on Wednesday, the uh, students will be going back to school, and uh, school will be in session, which means we'll be conducting our uh, Operation Safe uh, Ride Back to School enforcement campaign, which means we'll be uh, in enforcing the school speed zones, uh, which start from 7 to 4 on school days when the children are present. Uh, we'll be looking for uh, cell phone usage, uh, disobeying school bus stop arms, and also uh, disobeying the crossing guards. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope everybody pass it on to your neighbors, those that are here today. It's a very big concern that first, it's a big concern every day, but when school first starts, everybody's excited, nobody watches, and uh, we really need to watch now because there is a lot of bicycles. And people seem a tendency to use their cell phones all the time. I wonder what we did without them when we used to go to school. We'd go, get on the streetcar, get on the bus, walk to school. and So we really need to be careful. And those cell phones need to be turned off by the schools. And it is posted. Thank you very much. Consent agenda? All items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the Village Board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered for all 
All, all other agenda items. So move. Motion Second. made by Trustee Ajiris. Second. Second by Trustee Lang. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Argyris? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Abascato? Yes. A new business, all listed items for discussion and possible action. 13A, resolution approving a real estate contract between Chicago Executive Airport and Pawaukee Aviation for the purchase of land along 265, parcel 30-B, Sumac Road, Wheeling, Illinois. I thought I saw, oh, there you are. The airport managers here, if you have any questions, Mr. Uh, Rule, would you come to the uh, front, please? Do we have any questions or do we have a motion? So moved. Motion made by Trustee Brady. Second. Second by Trustee Hine. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Argeris? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Abascato? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 13B, public hearing and resolution regarding a 6B <coughs> property tax exemption for 555 Ellendale Drive. So the public hearing is now open. Do we have any comments or concerns from the public for this? If there not being, if there be none, then that is closed. And now we have the resolution. Motion to close the public hearing. Motion made by Trustee Ajiris. Second. Second. Second by Trustee Brady. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Ajiris? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Abascato? Yes. Um, item B2, Two. resolution indicating municipal approval of a Cook County real estate Class 6B status for a certain real estate located at 555 Ellendale Drive in the village of Wheeling. Do we have any questions? Madam President, I do. Trustee here. Um, they had a 6B that was granted as a petition. You guys here? Yes. Stand up here. Thank you. Give your uh, name and address, please. Hi. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor. Uh, council members of the board uh, Brian Liston here on behalf of uh, Ergus Plastics and your question trustee uh, here yes back in uh, 02 they were granted for 540 Allendale a uh, 6b which expires in 2014 and according to the memo that we have are they going to purchase that building or are they going to vacate that after 2014 mm -mm. Well, uh, the purchase of 555 Allendale across the street is an expansion of our current mm -hmm. facility, and we're requesting the 6B. Uh, I understand that. Okay, then the other part of that question is you want a 6B at 555 Allendale. Across the street, correct. Across the street, and it's coming through a 40-foot-high uh, Realty LLC is the applicant. Correct. Okay. Now, they're going to move across the street and want this 6B, does the 6B, if they choose to vacate the property after the, the 6B runs out, then we've just invested money just to have them occupy that building for an extended period of time just to get the infrastructure up to a speed so you can turn around and sell it to somebody else. Well, that's definitely not our intention. We're, we're having a $5 million dollar investment into 555 Allendale with uh, a whole new product line. We, we have uh, the, uh, the uh, we're developing new lines of business for recycling tires, vinyl runners, stair treads, and chair mats. And we have Home Depot, Lowe's, and Walmart as our client. And uh, they had, all these companies have taken their products uh, back from overseas now to America. We plan to uh, immediately have 40 employees by the end of the year. There'll be another additional uh, total new employees of 80 employees, and we're making a substantial investment. There's 
no, um, uh, I mean, th th this is the, there's no thought of us moving if we're going to expand into this facility across the street. Okay, so they're going to just lease that property? No, we're going to own it, and okay. we're going to develop our product in there. We're putting a $5 million investment and into it. And you're going to also stay at the other location? Correct. Okay. Well, I mean, we've, we've just added another almost a uh, million dollar rail spur uh, to join the property and uh, we've made a significant investment not only in our company but in Wheeling as well and two, we currently have 230 employees uh, in the company and 84 percent of those employees are from Wheeling who work, shop, live and send their kids to schools here. These uh, Mr. Starr and Mr. Lewis are I, I really believe textbooks examples of how to run a business if you walk through their facility you have employees that have been there for 25 years and uh, each one of them uh, is dedicated to air gas uh, Argus plastics and the, the develop, development of that business and uh, it's, it's a mo role model for any company in Wheeling and we we want to stay in Wheeling we like Wheeling and we're going to put another five million dollars of uh, capital into this immediately. Sounds good. Well, you answered the questions. Thank you, and nice job. I have no further questions. And Mr. No just one before you make a mo before I ask for a motion, Mr. Van do you have anything to add to that? Because we've gone over there and taken a visit of that building. Uh, no, I have. I think Mr. Liston covered the uh, <clears throat> general situation pretty well. Argus is currently headquartered at 540 Allendale. Um, this building purchase of 105,000 square foot building vacant uh, directly across the street as part of their expansion so they will remain owners of both buildings as part of this expansion. Um, the, what, I guess what I should note is their original request included a 6B renewal on their existing building which we did not move forward to the board because of our existing policy to not consider 6B renewals. Um, so their application tonight is limited only to the 6B on the target building at 555 Allendale. So both. Motion made by Trustee Ajiris. Second. Second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Ajiris. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. President Avascado. Thank you, and uh, we look forward to you uh, continually increasing over there. Thank you, Your Honor, and it's been a, it was a pleasure dealing with the staff uh, on this matter too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for staying. We don't know. Item 13C, approving and authorizing the village president and clerk to execute a redevelopment agreement for the Millbrook Point development compromising a part of the North Tiff District of the Village of Wheeling, Cook and Lake Counties, Illinois. Mr. Ferrillo. Thank you, Madam President. Before the board tonight is a redevelopment agreement related to the uh, completion of the Millbrook Point development uh, on Wolf Road. That development was approved in 2007 for the construction of 60 townhome units uh, began construction in 2008 due to uh, various reasons, uh, mainly the downturn in the economy. Uh, the development has been slow. The developer, Mr. Levitis, did not seek uh, TIF, uh, <clears throat> TIF incentive when he initially constructed this uh, project, but has come to us since. Before the board tonight is a redevelopment agreement that relates to the completion of the construction of phase two of that development. Phase one of that development, uh, as we've looked at it, uh, included 26 townhome units, uh, most of which are completed, I think, are, are they all completed now? All 26, phase two is underway. <clears throat> the uh, TIF incentive proposed under this RDA, which is pursuant to a term sheet that we presented to the board, is a $1.5 million TIF incentive, all related to increment developed from the phase two units, the uh, 30, 30, it's, th is it 34 on phase two or five? 34 on phase two. Uh, this is a true pay-as-you-go TIF incentive, which means that the developer will not be provided TIF increment until it actually is received by the treasurer or our finance director from Cook County. <clears throat> the basic structure of this development is that the developer has four years from the effective date of this agreement to complete phase two. Uh, during that four-year period, if the developer completes uh, at least one or more units, as TIF comes in, TIF uh, increment is uh, generated, it will be turned over to the developer. It's defined as net TIF increment, which means it's uh, net of any TIF uh, or any bond uh, obligations that we have in the North TIF district, which includes the Westin Hotel. It's also net of any um, uh, 
incentive due to any of the taxing bodies, <clears throat> which uh, may include the school districts if kids uh, ultimately uh, reside in the development. If uh, at the end of the four-year period the developer completes the 34 units, the village will issue a TIF note uh, in the amount of $1.5 million less any TIF incentive that the developer received during the initial four-year period. The TIF note uh, is a at 5% fixed rate. Uh, additionally, that TIF note will be less uh, any impact fees that are due on this development. We have calculated, uh, based on the ordinance, if applied as written, uh, impact fees due to the park district, the high school, the elementary districts, and the library of $169,231. Uh, the developer has asked for a reduction in that uh, amount based on the demographics that have been established in his development. What's unique about this development is that we have phase one completed and we're aware of the population in phase one. So we don't have to rely on the projected population. We actually have a population in the first 24 units. The developer has uh, made a case based on that population that we should look at that demographic, apply it to phase two, uh, and come up with a, a, a number that's more realistic. That number has been calculated by uh, Andrew Jennings uh, of Community Development, and instead of $169,231, the impact fee uh, that he's come up with is $122,450. We have indicated to the, the staff is uh, in support of this, we've indicated to the developer that uh, we would uh, want the developer to talk to the taxing bodies to get their uh, buy-in to this, to get their understanding of this. So tonight the RDA is going to include an impact fee of 169. Once uh, the discussions are completed with the park, the schools, and the library, we'll come back to you with a proposed reduction of 1 to 125. Uh, the developer has indicated that uh, because finances are, are tight, that the, the, the impact fee be paid from the increment. So in other words, the $1.5 million TIF incentive that is proposed under this uh, RDA, from that amount over the four-year period as increment is generated on phase two, the first $125,000 would come into the village and be distributed as impact fees, which would leave the developer with $1,375,000 to be distributed to the developer as the uh, project is uh, moving toward completion. In the event the developer is unable to complete the project in the four-year period, uh, 48 months, the, uh, the agreement provides that the, the RDA it terminates and the incentive um, obligation that the village uh, is to pay would go away. In other words, if uh, over the two-year period, 10 units are built and we, we pay increment based on those 10 units, but he cannot complete the full phase two, the agreement would terminate and the obligation of the village would would terminate. The developer is here to uh, answer any questions. I certainly can answer any questions, but we're prepared to uh, ask you to vote on this. I have a question. Uh, Trustee sure. Hine had a, I'm sorry, Trustee Lane had a question. Thank you. This, this had been uh, talked about and approved months and months ago. Why is it coming to us now so late, or what's, what was the delay? Uh, well, it hasn't been approved. The term sheet was approved. The RDA wasn't approved. And But normally, doesn't that happen within a reasonable amount of time? There was, uh, I received the initial comments back uh, probably around the end of April, and I had the agreement for, for probably about two, two months about prior to completion. And we were, we've been discussing recently the TIF note and the uh, impact fees. Okay, and, and since time has lapsed, are there any retroactive funds that we owe on this? No, no. no. Uh, the, the funds to be paid on this are related to phase two increment in its entirety. There's not been a unit completed in phase two. Uh, you will not see phase two increment, my guess is for, uh, could be at least a year. Would you say that, Bill, or, or more? Okay. So if there's no, uh, it, we only pay out funds here if increment comes in. Okay. And, and We're far from that. Last question. Phase one is completely sold out? Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And trustee here, you said you had a question? I did. I think that was partially answered. Does this piggyback on, he can build 
the structure and what happens if he doesn't sell the units? Uh, increment won't come in. Increment will only come only in based as on occupied units. Well, as not only that, you can have an occupied unit where an individual doesn't pay their property taxes. Increment only gets realized by the county if a unit's been purchased and the homeowners okay. pay their taxes. Okay. If you have if you sell 10 units and all 10 homeowners don't pay their taxes, then we're not going to be in a position to distribute increment. Okay. This truly is pay as you go, meaning we don't pay it unless it's realized. Thank you. Trustee Brady has a question. Yes. You know, that building that's under construction now, is that phase, the first building in phase two? Yes, we have a few buildings that are already constructed. The, the one, yeah, I seen, I, I know you owed the, the bank, one more yeah. building to the bank, yeah. and, but now there's another building that, that seems to be going up on the, on the uh, southern portion of the, uh, the, the next. Do you want to, Gary, if you would you come up thanks. to the front? Thank you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Hi. Uh, yeah, the building, I mean, we have completed, as Jim had said, I mean, phase one is completed. There's one building in phase one that is all completed and done and pretty much sold out. We only have one unit left. Uh, and then there's uh, two additional buildings that are being constructed now in phase two. And we're hoping that once we have uh, an agreement with the TIF and redevelopment, the bank is willing to fund additional funds to build more buildings. You know, it just what, related to what Trustee Lang alluded to, the length of time since we, we first talked about this agreement, you didn't have phase one complete, and you, you've already built two buildings since we started talking about this, and, and we're, we're voting on it tonight. You know, and now you know the problem. You can build faster than you can get the legal part of it done. There's, there's something that's <laughs> wrong here that it takes this long to come up with an agreement. I don't know. Thank you. Good job, by the way, Gary. Thank you. I got a question. Trustee Jeers. Thanks. Mr. Furlow. Yes. Who determines these impact fees? Explain this to me. You got $169,000 in change going to basically four different taxing bodies. Right. What determines the amount? Out of that $169,000, what bothers me is over 104000 that goes to the Wheeling Park District. What impact do they have on those residents that are going there? It's by ordinance. Your, your ordinance that's been in place here in Wheeling for probably 20 years here. But how come it's develop, so different on different developers? Develops a formula. It, it's a formula based on unit bedrooms. It's tied to bedrooms in units. And per bedrooms, two bedroom units have a different projected population than three bedroom units. And based on the populations projected, we have formulas in our ordinance that have, again, been around for years and years. We've been applying these consistently to develop who gets what in terms of uh, impacts. Now, keep in mind, children have impacts on schools. Yeah. Uh, adults and children have impacts on park districts and libraries. And All right, let me ask you this. Out of that 169,000, is it based on phase one and phase two? Or no, it, it, well, I'm sorry, yes, yes it, is, it is phase one and phase two. So on two. a total number, how many units? 60. 60 units. Right. He's not being treated, this development's not being treated any differently than any developments I've seen. No, over I understand the that. Period. I just, I, I, I don't know, maybe we need to look at the formula again. Pardon me? Maybe we need to look at the formula again on how we determine who gets what. We recently looked at it in um, 2010. We re reviewed it then uh, and, and updated it. Um, keep in mind that impact fees are designed to cover that first year of development when income taxes, I'm sorry, property taxes are not being realized. So during that first year of not only development, first year of um, people living in the development, you as a village and the other taxing bodies aren't receiving property taxes to pay for services because property taxes are paid, as you know. But we're not getting an impact are, fee. Are paid in arrears. But we're not getting an impact fee, and we're probably the biggest impact I, I shouldn't law. say, uh, the, the, the taxing bodies, impact, the impact fee ordinance is designed to cover that first year when property taxes aren't coming in. That's what they're for. Once property taxes are realized, that's why impact fees go away. Property taxes now cover schools, libraries, parks. No, and I understand that, but I think you can make the argument, if you do nothing, you have nothing coming in anyway. That was one of the things that we discussed, and basically phase one is flowing taxes. I mean, we have 26, 30 units that have uh, sold and closed, and people are paying their taxes. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the reasons that, you know, it's been taken this long is for this reason exactly. We're going back and forth and trying to determine 
the amount of impact fees and how it affects me as a developer and the village itself. So, uh, you know, we've been going at it for a while. I mean, and uh, I understand that uh, the village and the staff has the opportunity to, uh, uh, to look at the formulas and adjust them accordingly. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've been down this road for such a long time that I just really want to put this to an end and it really makes a difference with uh, approving this RDA and moving forward in order for me to get the financing through the bank and to uh, continue construction and you know luckily I mean we have been doing as well as we can and the sales are taking place we have contracts pending and I'd like to move forward and build these units and get people moved in um, you know but again the reason that I asked for those fees to be paid in the back I mean you know when we first came in in front of you guys and asked for this development to happen I mean none of these fees were discussed but as I had come to realize and to know that those fees were always there but you know uh, it's just something that Bill had looked at it was discussed with staff numerous times and uh, all right can I finish thanks you know what I'd like to have this come back to us for another review I really do we created the impact fee not the taxing bodies. Because mm -hmm. I was on the board and just got elected and we created right. impact fees. And because we knew development was coming in, in the future of this community. I think we need to look at this and look at the structure and how we determine impact fees. So much more going to a park district versus a school. I don't, you know, I think I like, I like to see that again. I like to review that. I think a lot of us here don't understand it. And this is really was an eye opener looking at the numbers of a breakdown. So. You know, you go and knocking on four different taxing bodies and asking for forgiveness, <laughs> wasting your time. That came from us, this law, not from them. That was a gift from this village to them, and the developers given that gift. So I'd like to see a workshop in this fall on that, if that's okay with everybody else. In the meantime, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Agreed. motion to approve the ordinance. Trustee Brady? Yes. That's your motion yes. to approve the ordinance? Yes. Motion made by Trustee Brady, second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Heer? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Argeris? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Aviscato? Yes. Thank you. Item 13D, Ordinance Amending Title 19 Zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, docket number 2012-9. Mr. Janik. Good evening. Um, there's a, a lot of pages, um, a lot of alterations to the zoning code. Uh, looks like a lot of, of, uh, of stuff being changed. But what this really is, is uh, a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, um, back or uh, new language being added to the code. Um, not a lot of text, but uh, changes here and there that updates our code. Uh, we typically do this on maybe a yearly or by by uh, annual basis, and um, a lot of it is just changes that uh, that we notice as we go through uh, through dockets, uh, stuff we see other other municipalities doing. Sometimes it's changes due to the state of Illinois or to federal um, changes. Uh, so what you have here tonight is so we're not changing any any map. There's no map amendments here. Changes to various sections of the code to keep us updated. If you have any questions, do we uh, have any questions? Can I add something? Oh, uh, I, Mr. Fondilis wants to add something, okay. and then Trustee Brady. I, I would just like to add for everybody to understand what this is. As as Mr. Janik said, this is an annual or every other year. Uh, review of the code, but the process by which this document has come to you has been washed, if you will, uh, through the plan commission already through a number of meetings with uh, them with their review, public hearings, uh, and they have concluded on the document and approve and bless the document that's before you this evening. So everything that is being suggested tonight has run through the plan commission and is being brought to you with their blessing and I must say with their assistance as one of their roles in not only looking at the code and ensuring that projects as they come to the village of Wheeling uh, are met with the code. They are kind of the keepers in that regard of, of the aesthetics of this village. Uh, one of their other responsibilities is to help staff 
uh, go through these annual reviews and come up with logical changes that will help both the village and uh, developers as they, they work with us to bring new projects to light. So I just wanted to let everyone know the process by which this document comes before you this evening. And Trustee Brady had a question. Thank you. I got several. Uh, I read this here. By the way, first of all, kudos to Mark, your department, and, and Andrew, and the plan commission for, for the job you did. It's really a, uh, you went in depth in a lot of things that, and made it a little bit more understandable, uh, a little bit more streamlined, a little bit up to date. And I think you guys are on the right track doing this periodically as things change, as we progress. Uh, well, one thing, uh, just a question here, real easy one. On page three of the code changes, Light motor sales, what is a light motor vehicle? Um, cars. Oh, just cars? Yeah. So yeah. when they indoor uh, sales or whatever it is, that, that's just for cars and they can do it inside a building. That's correct. We, we, we've had um, a couple of different um, people interested in, and they, they do, they, they sell vehicles, but they're not outdoor sales. They're within a building, uh, maybe in a, in a industrial area. And uh, we do get uh, taxes from these sales, but we thought we'd, we'd codify that um, those uses specifically. And then a, a comment on page six, section G, under shared parking. Uh, a, a great, you know, and since Andrew has been here, uh, most of the time he's given us the, the wherewithal of making these these variations we were always struggling with in shopping centers uh, go away by, by looking at each individual business that's in a shopping center and say, so, wait a minute, this guy's peak time is at noon, this fellow's at six o'clock, it's going to work. And we, we, we clean up all big mess that we struggle with as plan commission and a board for years and, and but I, I there was one thing that we could never seem to get by as as a plan commission years ago was cross access and you know that's when you look talking shared parking we could we could benefit even more if there's a way that this village could force cross access agreements between uh, uh, businesses you know uh, uh, it'll help with reducing the accidents at driveways you know, by giving alternate means for someone to exit or enter an area. But yet, we, we, we go to, you know, you see an opportunity to do that, you go to the developer or the, or the owner that's, that's building and you say, you know, we'd like to see you get across access and, and the next meeting, uh, no, he, he don't want to do it. Well, you know, and, and it ends right there. I think if we should be a little more aggressive somehow. I don't know what we can do other than maybe call the other guy in and say, listen, you two, this is what we need. You know, and, and let's see if we can get it done. Other communities do it, and it works. Uh, you know, it, it, you take a perfect example, McDonald's and, and the 222 building and, and the shopping, you know, the shopping center, Walgreens on the corner. You know, if people had to go from, from McDonald's to Walgreens, they got to pull out on the Dundee Road and pull back in. They could, they could do that if there was one curb cut, even though there's a slight, there's a slight grade variation, not that much. It could be done. Those are the types of things I think we have to look at uh, when we're talking about uh, shared parking. Uh, that, that's on that. Uh, page 14 uh, on your DACA report uh, on, on, on these care homes. Uh, report shows small residential care homes do not require a special use according to your recommendations. Uh, and I can understand uh, you're saying that, well, you know, the, the, the smaller homes, there's less of a problem of, of, of not enough parking, whatever the case may be, and, and, and since that these these care homes are regulated by the government, uh, by the state, the county, and, and every, everybody else that, that have you, uh, there's still a deal where living in a care home, you know, the size of the home and, and how many people you can put in it and, and how many people you can park there is more or less self-regulatory. You can't put... 10 people in a, bed, in, a, in a care home that's only got three or four bedrooms, uh, you know, and legally because the state won't let them do it. Each person has to have their own bedroom. Uh, you know, consider our requirements for a child daycare home and how we regulate them regarding size, life safety, supervision, licensing, parking, outdoor recreation, etc. You know, I feel all care homes, no matter what size they are, should be a special use. We can't forego the public hearings that go on with these special uses to give the neighbors a chance to ask questions, find out what's going on, or provide facts pro or con uh, for the proposal. You know, it's just too many things. You can't say, okay, well, this, these they have four more people in here, same, same use, same opportunity, everything else, but because they only have four and they got eight, uh, they don't have to do a special use. No, they all should be a special use. You know, 
and uh, one other thing related to that, uh, also uh, checking your definitions under residential care homes, uh, nothing in there says that, that all, excuse me, all the, the uh, uh, verbiage in there related to the operation of these here says that less than, they should, should, can only operate less than 24 hours. In other words, we don't allow full-time care homes in, in part of our uh, definition. So that's another thing you're going to have to look at. Uh, I don't know what your, your comments are or thoughts are on, uh, on the special use, but I don't know what the board's uh, feelings are on that, but I think it's, 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 we do it with, for the, uh, for the uh, daycare centers. Yeah, they, they're licensed by everybody also, just as these are, but, but yet we have to worry about the kids where they're parking the fence, type fencing they got, et cetera, et cetera, uh, drop off and everything else. And, and, and a lot of times we can either approve or, or deny these things depending on, on the neighbors, what they tell us. There might be a, a four hours. In other words, we don't allow full. Oh, you, I heard an echo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, depending on, on, on the circumstances of the neighborhood where, yes, they fit, no, they don't fit, whatever the case may be. So I think we should, we should look into that. Uh, and, uh, Okay, then the only other thing I got is page 15. When were the amendments for the final plat approved for fresh farms? Why is that in here? You know, it says that, you know, it was never approved. The final plat was never approved. And it's looking to be approved, at least the way I, the way I, I see it here. Those are my questions. Want to answer them or? Mr. Ferrillo wanted to... Uh I can address residential, also. residential care homes. Uh, that's not a change in our code. Uh, group homes of up to six individuals uh, under the Fair Housing Act, we cannot require special use. The idea there is that these people live together as a family unit and can't be treated any differently. But above six, you can go ahead and, and regulate and, and start to require the special use for the larger ones because now you're talking about more of a, um, institutional is the wrong word, but more of a... Uh, a uh, health provider care setting. So your, your idea of small group homes requiring uh, a special use is, is not legal. I'm not considering group homes, care homes. Well, that's, what this, that's what this is. Didn't this replace the definition of group home, uh, Mark? Uh, that's correct. Um, yeah, Jim, you were, I was going to say the same thing. We, we can't uh, make those special uses, but what we're doing in this, in this change is differentiating between a small group home and a, and, a, and a larger group home, which is up to eight people. And uh, we just thought we would, because um, there are sometimes that neighborhoods are more affected by a larger than, than a smaller one, and if somebody did want to come in with a smaller group home, we would differentiate it so you guys would know that it's not a large home and they're, and they're limited to a certain number of people because of the number of bedrooms. Well, are you considering a group home, uh, uh, somebody where a group of people get together and, and say, you know, we're going to live in this house? Or, or are you saying that somebody that needs, needs full-time help? Well, we have a definition that's under family right now, um, the group home. And it's, it's up to eight people with, um, that live together. Uh, that, that's our definition right now. Little City has group uh, care homes all over the suburbs. We probably got a few of them here where uh, mentally disabled people live in these homes. They, you know, they, they, can, they can live they, in a neighborhood, a, a neighborhood atmosphere, you know, get to know the neighbors, have a very calm, peaceful life. They cannot, find, they have to have full-time supervision by, by a, super, a, 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 a professional staff person or two, you know, and they live there. That's their home. Not in, not in some institution uh, where, where they live in a dormitory. This is the thing that Clearbrook and Little City have pushed for for years. I built six of them, I know. So there's a big difference between group homes where, where people want to get together and live together or somebody where they're caring, they're actually caring. These people cannot function on their own and they're living in our neighborhoods. I guess, you know, then, then, then we're off base here or something. Uh, the, the, the Fair Housing Act protects those people and protects them from having to go get a special use every time they want to live in a neighborhood and function just as you're saying. Uh, this code provision is not a change in the village code. It is a continuation of the code that has existed to comply with the federal law. Uh, I, that's, that's my legal opinion on it. I, I mean, that's, that's the law. We're very confident that that's the law. Uh, when you get bigger and you start to impact it with parking and uh, you know staff impacting neighbors, 
that's when you can start to step in and regulate. But the smaller ones, whether you call it a group home, a care home, I think we're saying the same thing here, Trustee Brown. Yeah. The, 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 the group homes require uh, licensing by the state <clears throat> and, 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 and the federal government and, or the county and, and the, the, the health department. The, the, the state will look at a group home. The state will license a group home. Yes. I still think we're talking apples and oranges here. Okay. I got a question. Trustee no. Hine. Thank you. Um, and then Trustee Dears. I just want to piggyback on what Trustee Brady is saying over there. Um, our housing stock is in Wheeling. Um, we have condominiums and townhouses with parking, shared parking and controlled parking. Uh, a lot of the areas of Wheeling are privately owned. Uh, we have single family homes that started out in the middle 50s at nine to a thousand square feet up to some larger homes. I don't think it fits. I think that we've got to make this entirely a special use step, whether it be a large residential or small residential care home, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So I think it should be all special use R1 through R4. <coughs> you see you got large residential uh, home cares that are special use. I think it should all be that way. That's it. Thank you. Go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. Trustee, oh, excuse me. Uh, I, uh, what I'd like Mr. to do is present to the board the legal uh, basis for uh, the ability to regulate group homes and care homes so that we, you can make a decision seeing the law in front of you. Uh, can you I'll, define that? I'll do that uh, for the next meeting, if, if you would. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a memo before the board meeting so that you can review the law that I'm trying to, uh, to explain. Trustee Jiris. The question I have, define group home. Is a group home my house where I can put eight individuals in there to care for them at any given day? Up to eight. And they can live there? Up to eight, that's okay. correct. See, <coughs> but it also depends on how many bedrooms you have and the living conditions. Okay, let's take, let's take, based on the code today, let's take an average Dunhurst home, say a thousand square feet, three bedrooms, one bath, small living room, okay, and a kitchen. I can have eight people live in that house? No, there's a there's certain, number, certain number of square feet that, you, that also is required per person that's living there. So you can't just, just because that's three bedrooms doesn't mean you can have, uh, I mean, bedrooms are different sizes. Okay. So and, and there's, let's take the maximum of eight individuals. Pick a house in the neighborhood, my neighborhood. What's the minimum required size of that house that can accommodate eight folks? I, I don't have those stats. Okay. I, mean, I can get See, those for you. This is where the problem is, and, and, and I understand the law, but the problem that is ongoing, and your office is inundated with it every single day, where you have homes with family, friends, renting out, this guy lost his business, I got this family moving in, I got no room for cars in a two-car driveway, parked on the lawn, parked everywhere, Hollywood Ridge, Meadowbrook, Dunhurst, everywhere throughout this community, because we can regulate, and you have no thing with teeth in it, to, especially with the police officer, code enforcers, to, re, to even find these folks. This is ongoing. I can take in the neighborhoods to this day that was a problem that I called your office four years ago that's still a problem today. That's what scares me with the law, Mr. Attorney, because the, the neighbors and the residents are the ones that are suffering. Somebody's getting subsidized, somebody's picking up on piggyback on something with rents, and people are making money in their homes renting them out. This is the problem. And if we don't take action now as a board, the problem based on the economy is going to get worse. We're opening a permitted use, and you know what? We're threatened with lawsuits. Wait a minute, it's permitted use. We've gone through that. We've heard that all of us in the last couple of years. It never ends. Everything's a lawsuit in the days. But you know what? We need to look at that. And if that means tabling Table Bill 19 tonight and workshopping some of this stuff, which I, in my opinion, and the second thing was we should have maybe done this because the plan commission and you guys put a lot of time, and there's, so, there's 100 plus pages of stuff here to review that we got on Thursday. I think some of this stuff should be workshop. Maybe you need to back it with the law, Jim. 
Okay? Maybe we need clearer definition based on a question I just asked you on square footage of bedrooms and stuff like that and what's permissible and make a, a sound, good decision here before we just pass on another amendment to Title 19. That's my opinion. On the whole Title 19 that we're looking at or the housing? Well, I don't know how you can pick and choose one thing. Well, that's, uh, that and, was know, my question. No, 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 I'm just saying, that's the question. I, I don't know how you just take one thing out or two things out and discuss it later without approving what's in front of us. You know, the whole thing. This is something that I like more time not to on read a timetable. I'd like to read some more of this. <coughs> I don't have it to read. It's in this thing. Well, that's even worse. You that's should have this me. to read. It'd be easier. Trustee Hine, and then I have Trustee Lane. I, I think we should, uh, because it's a lot of items here, we just can't take them out one at a time here. I, I, I think we should table the whole thing until we can get this straightened out. There's nothing in here that is that has to be uh, is time sensitive, so right. I'd like to make a motion that we table it right now. And Trustee Lane? Well, I, I disagree. I don't think we have to throw it all out just to... Well, how do you take, uh, how approve do you one or two things. We we can pick out any part of this at any time and discuss it further. I mean, there's a lot of work put into this. Let's. Oh, I agree. And so, what, I mean, I I, I had time to look at it all, and and uh, I had a busy weekend too, but it was, you know, and I, I understood it. Only I was on the plan commission for several years, but I understood what was happening, uh, and what the changes were. If you want to pull one part of it out, do it. But so I guess the question is, do we have a, a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve this, less the uh, section that pertains to group homes. I'll withdraw my. There was a motion. Oh, sorry. I will withdraw my motion. And I'll well, I didn't uh, I know. acknowledge the motion, so sorry. Well, I still made the motion. Okay. <laughs> and I'll I say, didn't acknowledge it because we were going I further. I understand, but I still made the motion. I have to take it off the table. Happy birthday. I understand. Thank <laughs> you. I'll second. What are you mean? seconding? Seconding. We're approving this and taking out the section that we're talking about so the attorney can, and the uh, staff can have a workshop. What's the section for the that they're taking out? The housing. Is that correct, gentlemen? Yes. The housing. Well, so the motion was I'm made sure. by Trustee Hine. Second by Trustee. Trustee Brady. No. Oh, Trustee Brady. Second by Trustee Ajiris to take out housing. The housing, but approve the rest. Is that correct, Mr. We, Ferrillo? It would be a little more specific to remove the definition, the change definition of. Um, what is this? Distinguishing between residential large and small re group home. Residential care home. Uh, the, the change in the use table related to residential care home and any changes that flow from the change in the definition of uh, residential right. care home. Well, it's all the housing. Thank you. Okay, well, there so are other housing issues that I think they're okay with. Who, who first did? Motion that was by Trustee Brady. He first did. And then second. He first did. And Dean seconded. Dean seconded. Okay. okay. Trustee Ajiris. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Roka. Uh, Trustee Lang. Yes, thank Trust you. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Argeris. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Hine. No. President Everscotta. Yes. We have official uh, communications. Do we have anything uh, this evening? We have approval of the bills, August second through August fifteenth. So moved. Motion made by Trustee Lang. Second. Second by Trustee Brady. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Argeris. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. President Eviscata. Yes. Board will go into executive session pending probable or intimate litigation. The appointment, improvement, and employment, compensation, dis discipline, performance, or dismissal of a specific employee or employees of the village. Was land acquisition in there? I'm sorry. Pardon me? Did you have land acquisition in no, there? No, I do not. I had a question regarding that, I'm sorry. I thought it was included. Thanks. So we'll add it. You don't have to uh, make that comment. Nice, we'll, we'll include it. 
says, thanks. I said, oh, okay. And land acquisition. Go, do I have a motion to go into executive session so at 729? Second. Motion made by Trustee Adair, second by Trustee Lang. Roll call, please. Trustee yes. Lang. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Argyris. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. President Viscato. Board of going executive session at 730. Oh, yeah. Returning, going to executive session at uh, 750. Well, 20 minutes. Seven. 20 minutes.